Hey CRMers, it's Benitez here and today I'm going to be going through the app designer for Dynamics 365. The app designer is something that I showed at CM Saturday Melbourne and CM Saturday Sydney. I did refer to it in my last blog post and in this blog post I'm going to be walking through the app designer for Dynamics 365. So one of the tips that I gave in my previous blog post as well as at CM Saturday Melbourne and Sydney was that the app designer is a great way of changing the end user experience when they interact with Dynamics 365. So typically when you log into CRM you've got a menu that you work with and you know at the moment this is just the default menu that you see and in the past if you wanted to alter the menu for Dynamics 365 you had to use something like the XRM toolbox sitemap editor. But the constraint with the sitemap editor is that you change it and that will apply globally. So no matter what security role an end user has, they will see that same menu. So one of the cool things about Dynamics 365 is that there's now the app designer which will allow you to create apps and those apps can be assigned to security roles. So if someone is a marketing end user then potentially you could just create an app where the menu is simply only going to show marketing. You know maybe it's something that they where they don't need to see settings or sales or if you have the field services add-on for Dynamics 365 and you don't want your marketing people to see that field services you can hide that as well. And that's one of the cool things about the app designer. It allows you to tailor that experience. All right, so how do we use app designer? Basically, you go into the solutions for um, where you want your app to reside in. And when you go to your solution, there is a new component on the left hand side called apps. And when you click on apps, this is where you can start creating or updating your existing apps. So to create a new app, you simply create on new, click on new and this new window is going to appear and basically you type in um, what you want to have as the name of the app and you can also give a description and you can also upload the image. Um, by unticking the use default image box and all you need to do is make sure that you have a web resource with the PNG file. I find that the dimension size for the app icon is 100 by 100. That, that, that's what worked for me. So when you click on, on done, it will create a new app for you and the first thing that you're going to notice is the sitemap and that is the first component that you configure and once you select the entities the rest will follow so in other words you'll see some dashboards in here and it will display any um, business process flows and then you'll see a breakdown of the forms, the views and the charts so when you click on this little arrow um, it will open up the sitemap app designer and there's three components to this. The first one is area, which is the tile that you select when you are browsing in CRM. And then there's new group. So gr this is what they call group. So to me, this is the heading or the category of, you know, what are the options that are going to be displayed underneath. And then you've got sub area. So sub area represents um, the entity or um, the dashboard. <laughs> that you want your end users to click on. So if I go by the example of um, focusing on a marketing end user, I could call this marketing and then if I click on new group I could do something you know, like customers and then this is when we can start referencing the entities. So the type um, as mentioned, you can select entity, you can select dashboard, you can also bring up a web resource or if you want them to be redirected 
um, to a URL you can do so. So something like if you want them to be redirected to um, your internet, you know, you can put your internet URL. Just be aware that if it is internet, it will only be displayed within um, their network because internets are internal unless they've, you know, remotely connected into their network. Okay, so if I select entity, and I'll just go with the standard, you know, setup of account and contact that normally sits under customers, and you'll see that when I select an account, it will automatically pull through the entity icon, which is pretty cool. So let's go ahead and add contacts. So if I add contact, that will now display um, the contacts entity. And so once you're pretty much done building your sitemap, you can click save and close. And as you can see, um, it's now added in the entity and now you can start configuring the forms, the views, and the charts that you want um, the end user to you. So I'm actually going to close out of this one and I'm going to refer to the one that I've created earlier. And if you want to see the other one that you've just created, just remember to click on the refresh button and it will show. Okay, so here's an app that I created uh, based on someone who works in the service desk team. And just for um, simplicity, I've just included things like um, the my work and the standard customers um, group and then I've just added things like cases, cues and knowledge articles. So if someone in my team is in the service desk team, this is what they're going to see. Um, I'm removing any other noise that they shouldn't be seeing because all I want them to focus on is doing the job, doing it well and not getting distracted by any other areas, areas of Dynamics 365. So things like the settings, they don't need to worry about that. Things like marketing, they don't need to worry about that. Things like sales, like in terms of the leads or the opportunities, they don't need to worry about that. Um, so simply when they log in, this is what they're going to see and this is what they're going to be using day in and day out when they interact with Dynamics 365. And in terms of um, what they see at the entity level, things like the forms over on the right hand side, this will retrieve all forms that exist within that entity. So in the scenario of the account, these are the main forms and these are the um, other forms like the quick view and the quick create. So this is another great way of selecting which forms you want your end users to see. So over here I'm going to select account because the information one is simply a legacy form that um, they don't need to see and then in terms of the quick view forms um, yeah I'll give them access to account card and recent cases and entitlements and sure, I'll allow them to use the account Quick Create. And then in terms of the views, um, it's the same step. So you select what you want them to see. So things like active accounts, um, inactive accounts, and that's all I'm going to allow them to see. And I want them to be able to, you know, use advanced find views and things like account lookup account associated, everything else they, they don't need to see. And then in terms of the charts, um, I've selected that they can see that. And then when we go down to cases, again you can define what they should see. So I'm simply just clicking on the forms that I want them to use and then same with views. I want them to see active cases, all cases, um, just click some several more cases being followed and then same with your charts you can select which ones they want to see um, by default if you don't select any um, it will show all of them so in this case where it says all down here because I haven't selected any it's going to automatically um, show all by default so once you're happy with the app in terms of configuring it to what that end user should see if they have, you know, like a particular security role. Um, you pretty much hit save and then you click on publish. If there are any known errors, it will tell you straight away that it cannot publish for these reasons. So it's just a matter of reading through the errors and um, resolving the, the issues that appears. 
Okay, so we've now configured the app, which is great, and now the next step is allowing permissions to the app. So to demonstrate, I'm going to log in as a different user, and before we apply the security role for the app, I want to demonstrate how um, the app apps in Dynamics 365 can be tailored to specific security roles where um, the, they will only see that app if they have the permitted security role for that app. So at the moment, if we click on um, this little drop down arrow over here, I only have the default um, custom Dynamics 365 app. So what we're going to do now is enable that app for the end user where they have the security role customer service role for an app. You go to settings and you'll notice that in here you are meant to see apps down here um, and I can't remember when I noticed it um, missing but for some reason in the latest versions of like Dynamics 365 you don't see it but that's okay because you can get to it if you browse to um, forward slash apps. So all you need to do is in your instance URL um, it's forward slash and then apps and you'll see the list of apps that are available within your instance. So if you click on the ellipsis button and you click on manage roles this will show you um, a new window and it pretty much um, presents all the security roles that exist in Dynamics 365 and you just need to select the one um, or multiple security roles that you would like to have access to this app so I think by default it's got system administrator and system customizer so I'm gonna enable the customer service representative app and click save and just to double check that it has been enabled we can see, oh sorry, been updated, you can see that it is ticked in here so now when I go back into Jon Snow's instance and if we do a refresh of the browser now when we click on the drop down we should see that Jon has access to the service desk app so you can now see in here so now when I click on the service desk app and if we click on the menu up here you'll see that um, what we had configured in the service desk app within the solution is now being applied when I browse to the service desk app so as I mentioned earlier they're not going to see marketing they're not going to see sales they're not going to see settings they are simply seeing what they need to see and what they need to do as part of their everyday um, tasks. So as a person who works in the service desk, this is all that I want them to focus on. So they just need to you know, have a look at cases, have a look at queues, um, take a look at the knowledge articles and you know, update them when relevant and also see the customer information and then things like their dashboard and, and any activity. So by refining the menu and minimizing you know the extra noise that you normally get um, with with the sitemap it narrows it down to what the end user actually needs to focus on if I now show you the forms that are on account so remember how we selected some forms that a user can see so for accounts we only wanted them to see the main account form and you'll notice that I can't switch to the other legacy form of information and then if I go click back on accounts we'll see that there is a reduced list of views and that will be based on the views that I selected in the app designer and then the same for cases when we go to cases we'll see that again it has a reduced list of views based on the checkboxes that I had ticked and if we go and open a case we should also only see the one uh, main case form I shouldn't be able to change it to the legacy information form
So by creating different apps for the different types of users for Dynamics 365, you're changing that end user experience. So they're no longer going to see things that they don't need to. However, what you need to be aware of is because the app has reduced the amount of information um, that they're seeing in terms of the menu, they can still get to the different entities through Advanced Find. Right? So if I now open up Advanced Find as John and if I click on the drop down, they'll see um, the entities still. So you can still use security roles in terms of the privileges and the access levels access levels in parallel to the app. So if they are not meant to have access to things like the marketing list, then you have to update it in the security role. So what the app does, just to be clear, is simply um, change the menu that they see, but they can still get to different entities through advanced fine. And if you do not want them to access those entities, then make sure you configure the security role as required. Okay. So just to recap, if you want to go ahead and build apps, you basically need to create it within a solution. And then when you have to do the export of your solution into the target environment such as UAT and production, um, you should get a prompt in terms of how you need to add um, a, the sitemap component. So the sitemap, so every time you create an app, there will be a sitemap that will be created as part of that app. So remember how we created I created the, the test one earlier and now if we go add existing and we click on sitemap we will now see that test um, sitemap as a result of that app which makes sense because an app is living off a sitemap so you need to bring that sitemap across to that target environment as well. Um, so that's another tip from me. Make sure you add that sitemap for that app into your solution. Um, the only other thing that I have found in regards to apps um, that I think is a flaw, and I'm not sure if the Microsoft Dynamics 365 um, team has picked it up, but when you do a restore of um, a, a restore and copy of a production instance into a sandbox instance, so something like UAT or dev, the URL within that app will point to production. So it's not going to point to um, the sandbox instance. So that's something that you need to be aware of. I mean, that's that's what I found in, in, in my case where um, when we've copied and restored a production instance into a sandbox instance, it was still referencing um, the production URL in the app, even though we were in the sandbox instance. Yeah, and as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.